Unit 1A, Introduction to Statistics. Definitions. Statistics deals with data, which is information. How do we handle information? How do we process it? How do we get meaning from it? This is very important today. We live in the age of big data. By the way, data is a plural word. So if you're writing something, you would say the data show something. You would not say the data shows because data is a plural word. Statistics helps us to deal with data by collecting it. How do we collect samples using questionnaires, phone calls? How do we collect data? Very difficult at times. How do we organize the information? Maybe make tables and graphs. How do we analyze it? Maybe use some mathematics to get averages. And how do we interpret it? How do we get meaning from the from our data? How do we show that cigarette smoking causes cancer? Statistics has two main branches, descriptive and inferential. In the first half of the course, we're going to be doing mostly descriptive statistics. We're going to be compiling information, gathering data, organizing it into some kind of manageable form, into tables and charts, even making pictures, graphs, and also calculating some numbers like averages and so on to help us get some kind of meaning from the data. Examples of doing descriptive statistics, conducting a survey where you're recording the hair color of people in the classroom, uh, calculating the average age of the students in the classroom, making a bar graph to show how many people have black hair, how many people have brown hair, how many people have blonde hair, and so on. These are all examples of descriptive statistics. In the second half of the course, we'll be dealing with inferential statistics, whereby we're going to make inferences or generalizations about the nature of an entire group by studying just a small sample of that group. So, for example, predicting an election result after only a small sample of ballots are counted. See, we have all the votes, all the votes cast. We only look at some of them, and we see that these votes seem to be heading towards candidate A. So then what do we do? We infer or we generalize this result to the whole population, and we say, oh, well, I think the whole population is going to vote for candidate A. This would be inferential statistics. Or we can be talking about all the sharks in the ocean. So all the sharks. Well, you can't capture every shark. So what do you do? You capture some of them and you measure them. And you find out that they have a certain average length, six feet. Then what do we do? We generalize or we stereotype all the sharks in the ocean. We say, well, I guess they all average about six feet. These are examples of inferential statistics. We're going to be dealing with population. A population is the entire group of interest. So, for example, maybe we're concerned with all New York City teachers. That's our 
group of interest. That's called a population. A variable is a characteristic of the individual teachers. So it might be their salary. So we usually use x for the variable. Let x equal the salary of a New York City teacher. So we're interested in the population of all New York City. The variable we're studying is all their salaries. So every teacher has a salary. A parameter is a number that describes an aspect of the population. So the number I could calculate is, let's say I calculated the average salary of all these teachers in New York City. The average salary of all the teachers in New York City Let's just say the average salary is uh, $72,000. That $72,000 is called a parameter. This is a parameter. Now, it's easy to remember this. Parameters are numbers that go with populations. P, population, P, parameter. A sample is part of a population. So if we're talking again about a population of all New York City teachers, there they are. Suppose I take a, a group of five teachers. That would be a sample. So a sample is part of a population. So this would be my sample of five teachers. Now, if I got the average salary of the five teachers in my sample, then suppose I say the average salary is $60,000. That's a number, but that came from my sample. Numbers that come from samples are called statistics. So 60,000 would be a statistic. It's easy to remember. Statistics go with samples, like parameters go with populations. Statistics come from sample. Now, when we choose a sample, frequently we want the sample to be random. The word random means by chance or accident. So something happens randomly, it's just by luck. A sample, frequently, we want to be random. random. Random means every person in the population has a chance to be in the sample. Or more precisely, every sample of a particular size has an equal chance of being picked from the population. One way to get a random sample is pick the names out of a hat. If we wanted to get a random sample of students in a class, suppose we wanted five students, then we would put the names in the hat and pick out five, five names. That would be a random sample. Now, we like our samples to be unbiased. Unbiased means that the sample looks like the population. So if our population was all New York City teachers, and we took a sample, and in the sample we had only male teachers, then that would be a biased sample. It would not be representative of the population because in New York City you got male and female teachers. In fact, maybe more female teachers. If we took a sample and it only contained males, it would be a biased sample, not representative of the population. Most of the time when we pick samples, we want them to be unbiased. Unbiased means they represent the population. In other words, they look like the population. So we would want our samples to be made up of males and females to look like the population. It should be like a small version of the population. That's what a unbiased sample should look like.
In this course, there is no algebra, but there are symbols that we use as a shorthand to represent certain quantities. We have a different set of symbols for samples and populations. As we go through the course, we'll be using these symbols and there's no need to memorize them yet, but as we go along, you will get used to these symbols. Scores are represented by the letter X. So when we collect data, we ask someone his age, they say five years, that's a score. If the age is X, then we say X equals five for that person. The next person is 10 years of age, X equals 10. And the same symbol is used for a population or a parameter. So statistics from samples and parameters from populations, uh, those scores are all symbolized by the letter X. N is the symbol for the sample size. If you're talking about a sample, it's lowercase n, and for a population, it's uppercase n. For a certain kind of average called a mean, if it's a sample mean, we're going to use X bar, X with a bar on top. And for a population, the mean is going to be signified by a Greek M called mu. The standard deviation uh, is going to be S for a sample and a Greek sigma for a population. For the variance, S squared for a sample and sigma squared for a population. And finally, for correlation coefficients, R is the symbol we're going to use for a sample and rho is the symbol we're going to use for a population. End of unit 1A. C1B for introduction to statistics, data types, and levels of measurement.